If it gets too hot, which may be a problem for you guys up here, the principal thing it does is it drive, the hot water drives oxygen out of the water. Oxygen will only dissolve in water when it's particular temperatures. As the temperature in the water goes up, less oxygen can be fit in the water. If there's not enough oxygen, the fish start to suffer and the plants start to suffer. So you've, you guys up here have actually got to watch it if you get too high temperatures in your water. The way you usually alleviate that is just by putting a bubbler in there. And that'll, that'll break up the surface more and it allows oxygen exchange. So it's usually okay. It's the same in Melbourne, you know, if it gets too low, the fish stop eating and the bacteria stop processing. So you actually have to stop putting food into the system because that food can break down and turn into ammonia, even if the fish eat it or don't. And if the bacteria is not processing, you can get toxicity build up and it can kill your fish. So the ideal temperature is around 20 degrees. Most Australian native fish like 20 degrees. There's, there's difference for everything. Barramundi like 27 or 28, but you can grow barramundi at 20 degrees. Aquaponic systems in terms of temperature, again, it's a, it's a marriage. It's like you make a compromise between the plants and the fish. Plants actually don't like the water too hot. They prefer it less than 20 degrees, really, most plants. But the fish like it up a bit. So around between 18 and 20 degrees is usually what I tell people is a good place, but that doesn't mean that if it gets a little bit warmer or it gets a little bit colder, everything's going to go out of whack and there's going to be problems. It's not going to cause problems, it's just that that's your ideal temperature range, try and stay near it. Um, like I said, if the temperature drops below 12 or goes above 30, the number one rule, and this is a number one rule for any problem, potential problem you might see in an aquaponic system is stop feeding the fish. It's that food input to the system and the nitrogen releases ammonia that causes all the problems. You can stop that by just stop feeding. A lot of people don't understand. They think fish are like us. If we don't eat every day we get cranky and we get skinny and we've got to eat because we've got to maintain our body temperature. Fish don't do that. Fish work at the, at the temperature in their body that the water is. Fish therefore require about 75% less energy than what we do. They're far more efficient. And so they don't use any of that food they eat to produce a temperature in themselves. They use it to grow themselves. So you don't have to feed a fish for a month and it's not going to suffer. More people with home aquariums lose fish because they overfeed them than underfeeding. And look, there's, there's a lot of crap in the industry. You go to an aquarium store, they'll sell you these food pallets that you can drop in the tank because you go on to Melbourne for a holiday. And I know that's probably silly because you guys don't go to Melbourne for holidays. But <laughs> <laughs> if you go on to Melbourne for a holiday for two weeks, they say, put this in to feed your fish. Don't. Just don't feed the fish. The fish will be fine. No problem. Most people get a friend to come in and feed their fish in the fish tank or something and they're like, oh, they look hungry. <laughs> Just keep throwing food in and the people you return and your fish are either all hugely fat and need to go on a diet for, for six months or they're dead because the, the toxic buildup of too much food. So the number one rule in any aquatic system with fish is if there's any problem, stop feeding immediately and don't worry about it. Okay, dissolved oxygen, the last one. It's important, fish, fish need oxygen to eat, metabolise, just like we do. Plants need oxygen, not at their roots. The root actually doesn't take up any oxygen, but if there's no oxygen in the water, the roots can start to get bacteria growing on them that are called anaerobic bacteria. Anaerobic just means no oxygen, and they cause root rot. So, you know when people tell you you might watch Gardening Australia and crusty old Peter Cundall says, don't put this plant in a damp place. It doesn't like wet roots. It doesn't like wet roots, but the reason it doesn't is because if it's too damp, it doesn't get enough oxygen. It's got nothing to do with the water. It's actually because the plant can't get enough oxygen at its root. Different bacteria and fungi come in because of the different moisture profile and it causes problems for the plant. So. What are the numbers? The maximum you can possibly get in water is about 10 milligrams per litre. So you're never going to go over that. 
And that, and you, you're usually talking temperatures in the water around about eight degrees C. There's not a lot of fish that like that unless they come from the Arctic or somewhere. The minimum for fish in Australia, for most native fi uh, species of fish, is about four milligrams per litre. Once it starts to go below that, you start to get worried. I've worked in aquaculture systems where you can have very high densities of fish. If the oxygen supply to the system goes off, you've got about five minutes. The fish use oxygen so much, and there's so many of them in there, that they just strip the water of oxygen and they all die. So you don't want it to get below four, and generally what I tell people is five. Can you just hang on one tick? I'm nearly finished, then you can, you can ask the first question. <laughs> okay, but for plant roots, the minimum is about two and a half to two. So what does that tell us? It tells us that the fish are the ones that set the oxygen limit in the system. If anyone says to you, your plants are looking no good, there's not enough oxygen, it's crap because the fish will die before the plants have trouble, okay? So the limiting factor in the system in terms of oxygen is always the fish. The plants can handle quite low oxygen levels. The minimum for the bacteria is about two, so they're the same. So it's all about the fish when it comes to oxygen. As long as you maintain oxygen that's good for fish, everything will be okay. Again, backyard systems are brilliant. The water goes through a gravel bed. So when you flood the gravel bed, there's oxygenated water in there, but then the action of when you drain it, of that water being sucked down through the gravel, actually pulls atmospheric air into the gravel. That just acts like a big syringe. You know, there's, there's an airlock there. The water comes down out of the gravel and it sucks in atmospheric air. That's why flood and drain gravel systems work so well, because they suck atmospheric oxygen in there. That helps the mineralization process and it also helps the plant roots. So, like I said, fish is where it's at in terms of oxygen depletion. And yeah, look, the, the way you do it is you use air blowers and air pumps. It's really simple. You put a 20 buck aquarium air pump on your fish tank, no problems. You're always going to have enough oxygen. Unless you're growing 100 kilos of fish in 10 litres of water or something, then you might have some problems. But most people don't do that in backyard systems. So. Another way to put DO in is to just have your water flow back into the surface and so it's breaking the surface up. A lot of people don't understand. They think that when you put an air stone in with an air bubbler that the bubbles that are rising up are actually putting oxygen in the water. They're not. It's when the bubbles hit the surface and break the surface up that it actually allows atmospheric transfer of oxygen. So it's not the bubbles themselves that actually do anything, it's the actual fact that they make a larger surface area because they're breaking up the surface area of the water. So that's just as good a way. If you've got a constant flow of water and a pump on constantly, then you just break the surface with it and you're always going to have well oxygenated water. And that's the way a creek and a stream works as well. It goes over the rocks, breaks up the surface area, there's a larger surface area and it lets oxygen in.